The main idea of our NAN workflow today is to build X posts just like this one. This is just one of five different post suggestions and each post suggestion is from a different blog post. Like this one from OpenAI, then the post created was OpenAI opens its first office in Germany located in Munich. Then a list of key highlights, so it aims to support German users and businesses, reflects strong demand for AI technologies in Germany, largest number of ChatGPT users in Europe. I've also tested it in websites that aren't necessarily in English. It did create the blog post in English and the way that I prompted it to build this kind of seems like it's guiding you to click inside of the article. So since this article is in Portuguese, it wouldn't make a lot of sense for me to create this post in English, but you're really just one prompt away from specifying that you want it to produce all the results in the language of your choice. So let's see how this works. It's a really simple workflow. The complex part of it is really this prompt right here. It does seem like a big prompt, but you'll understand why I placed it like this, why it's even better for us to have it like this, and why it'll be even cheaper for us to have a big prompt like this. So let's go over to Firecall's blog, copy that, go over to the chat and paste that in. So this doesn't really need to be a chat. It could be this schedule trigger node as well. Then you can place inside of it all the websites that you want it to recurringly fetch. So then every morning just get you all the suggestions possible for your own niche. Okay, so that is done. Let's go over to our email. Just receive the email right here. And this is what we got. If I wanted to tweet this, I keep saying tweet. I don't exactly know how we would say it now that it's X. I mean, probably like post it inside of X. So the button here just is written tweet. Huge sorry to Elon Musk. But if you click on that, you'll be redirected to your own X profile with everything types in just ready for you to hit post. Now there's also the image where you can just copy the image, go back to the post and paste that image in there. And yeah, I think you would want to refine the system prompting so it designs messages closer to how you write. But honestly, I do think this provides a lot of value, either if you'll use this for yourself or to sell this workflow to a potential client. It should be pretty interesting, but you have to know how exactly it works because at the end of the day, you'll be the one maintaining this project for hopefully a couple of months, if not years. So first of all, this MCP tool right here, maybe you're used to seeing two tools in here, one tool for listing the tools available and one tool for executing the found tools. What happens when you have that is exactly this. Let's execute this node, which lists the tools and we'll understand that all the output that this tool has will be sent inside of the context for your LLM. And so instead of relying on the LLM to use this tool, understand all the context it has, all the tools it has and how to use those tools, I just specified everything inside of the system prompt. So right here where I say available tool, I already described the Firecall Scraper tool, which is actually the only tool that I really use inside of the system. So not only will it already have the context of how to use this tool, but it won't have to list a bunch of tools that it will never use. Now, if you're not familiar with setting up Firecall's MCP tool, it's pretty simple. Just come over here to the credentials, create new credential. For the command, you can also refer to the documentation from Firecall, pick up the command right here, which is npx, paste it there, then I'll get dash y, place it inside of the arguments, then I'll select firecall dash MCP space, place that in there. And for the environments, all I want to do is grab this environment key right here, place that in there, select expression. I'll click on the equal sign, go over to firecall, create my API key. Let's suppose the API key was just blah, blah. Let's place that in there and then just hit save. I, I just noticed that the description I had for this MCP node was wrong, so I corrected it to this, executes the available tools from Firecrawl. Leave the tool parameters to be decided from the model. You can do that as well inside of the tool name, just place from AI and then mention tool name. The chat model I'm using is the GPT-40 mini. You can use other models. Well, let's see how it goes with the new Claude 4.0. So net. I'm not going to use the Opus model because it's really expensive. So save that. Let's just rerun this and see what we get if we get like a much better result. Likely not because of this right here. It tends to have the same result despite the difference in models as long as these models are pretty similar in performance. 
So now in my Gmail, just received the email. Uh, this is what we got. So Far Cry launched a comprehensive guide for building your alt image generators using AI. I believe this is a much better result just because it understood that all I wanted is results from the past seven days. And the only result from the past seven days is this one. So in that sense, the 4.0 model just understood way more accurately exactly what we needed. But let's look at the actual text. Yeah, I feel like it's much more objective. It's not trying to hype things up. I feel like AI sometimes tries to make a simple news seem extreme and then it clearly shows that it was built by AI. But this model doesn't seem to do that. Now, the last thing you'll want to look into is the Gmail node. This Gmail node probably took the longest time to create because of this huge HTML right here, which is responsible for the styling. Aside from that, the rest is pretty simple. Just place in the email that you want to receive this from. And the subject I'm using is the actual URL. You could potentially ask Firecall to just scrape the title of that article. And actually that reminded me that inside of the prompting, it also specifies that sometimes the user can send a specific blog post. So let's just go down here, get this blog post from Firecall, copy that, place that in there. And it should understand that now it doesn't have to collect a bunch of URL and go inside of those URL to fetch for the articles inside of those URLs, it will just understand that it should create the post based on just this single article. Okay, that's done. Let's go over to our inbox. Here it is. And there you go. Firecall published a comprehensive guide to the best enterprise RAG platforms in 2025. These key highlights really show that it's not just getting the headline, it's actually reading through the article. So if I copy down, let's say this 73%, uh, it got something from the introduction. Now let's get Pinecone offers 48% better performance with cascading retrieval. It's really getting inside the article and actually finding the key relevant information for that article. I was already done recording when I realized I didn't talk about the expenses. Executing this workflow spent me around 65,000 tokens, of which 836 tokens was for the output. I was lazy enough to just send that over to ChatGPT, which I believe might have a calculator tool as well as Claude and Grok that gave me all the same results. Feel free to pause the video and check the Claude Sonnet 4 pricing calculation. Using Claude Sonnet 4 is basically 10 times the price of the GPT 4.1 mini. I don't really think the GPT 4.1 mini or even the GPT 4.1 is sufficient. There's also the Firecrawl pricing, which if you pay annually, it's $16 a month, but unchecking this and having it build monthly is up to $19. I've placed all the calculation up here, so $19 divided by 3,000 tokens ends up with 0.0063 for each token spent. Since each token scrapes one page, we can consider six scrapes every time we run the workflow, since one of the scrapes is the main blog page that fetches for the five other articles. This is 0.037 a day, multiplied by 30 days is around $1.13. And considering our expense with LLM is this per usage, then times 30 days is around 81 cents of a dollar. So if you build some kind of daily system and run it for 30 days, this will be your expense per month. I always triplicate this estimation as we're going to be testing the application a lot. And for this specific workflow, we're depending on the AI agent. So just sometimes it's going to use the MCP more times than it needs to. And honestly, this is just a starter point. You would adjust this for your specific use case which ideally would make it much less dependent on the AI agent. That's why I even created this poll here in the AI Forge community for the members to vote on the tools they believe I should improve the most. If this is similar to something that you might have thought of building before and you want some improvements on it, please let me know in the comment section. That is it for today. To download this workflow, just head down below in the comment section. I'll pin the post where I placed the link to this workflow. That is it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Till then.